Hello and welcome back to the Lincoln Loco 3. Hope you're all doing well today and looking forward to today's episode. It's the transfer special and today it's a bit of a different transfer special. In recent years, our transfer specials have been trying to rebuild the entire squad essentially, trying to bring in fresh faces to have a good season. At this point, I feel like we already have a pretty decent team. We've just come 12th in La Liga, although we did drop three points compared to last season, but we're still in that same sort of ballpark. So I feel like we are a pretty stable, established La Liga side. Now our transfer specials, what I think they should be about is strengthening specific areas of the squad. As I was telling you in yesterday's episode, the area that I really want to specifically strengthen in today's transfer special is the center of midfield. We could also do with some cover at wing backs and some better wing backs as well, but the center mid and maybe even CDM is an area where we really need to strengthen. However, there is an issue and uh, we'll get to that issue in just a moment. Before we get into today's episode, we'd hugely appreciate it if you could drop a like on today's video. It would massively help me out and of course to help in the YouTube algorithm. Of course, subscribe as well. We are agonizingly close to 19,000 subscribers now, which means we're very close to 20,000 subscribers. And I really want to get there. 20K would be, oh, absolutely fantastic. And of course, today's episode is brought to you by One Football, the best football app out there for all of your football news, live scores, and updates. When it comes to transfers, One Football is usually pretty hot on the transfer front. They get loads of news articles on the website from a mixture of sources as well as their own journalists. So you always get quite an up to date and broad spectrum of the transfer news coming through. So I find it really useful to use the app to actually specifically look for transfers. The app is completely free to download and downloading it via the link in the top line of the description helps me out massively so help support the channel by downloading it via that link would hugely appreciate it you love to see it now the issue we have going into this transfer window is the board don't want to give me any more wage budget which is very very sad you can see just above my head the transfer budget has been set at seven and a half million pounds which is very nice thank you board for that seven and a half million just behind my head, which you can't see, is the wage budget. So if we go onto the uh, finance screen, you can see here on the transfer budget and the wage budget, the wage budget has not changed since last season. They refuse to move it upwards, which means we hardly have any money to spend. Now, a few players are leaving at the end of their contract. And of course, we'll save some money on some loan players that are leaving the club as well. So you can see here, committed spending is £264,000. So we roughly have £30,000 extra to spend on wages which is not a lot. That's like one or two players essentially. So what we've got to do is either adjust the transfer budget to get some more wage budget. We've got to sell some players to free up some transfer budget and wage budget. Or what I'm gonna try right now is actually ask the board for more wage budget. So let's make a board request. Let's go to finance and it's not even an option. Um, and it's probably not going to be an option because we've just been given the budgets you see, so they're not going to do that, which is very sad. So that's 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 one thing out the window, that's not quite so good. So we're going to have to work around this, which is uh, a little frustrating maybe. You can see we've got 21 million in the bank as well. Projection wise, it's meant to go up and up and up as we continue in La Liga, so that's fantastic. If we get European football at some point, that'll keep going up more. But last season, we did make a loss of five million pounds, mostly because we did spend a lot of money on upgrading facilities and on players actually too. Speaking of facilities, I may as well ask them right now to improve the training and youth facilities as well. So as for the training, I'm going to ask for youth facilities. And whilst I'm here, I really want to get affiliate clubs in like Asia or America to try and boost our reputation and get some more finances from selling merchandise abroad. So I'm going to ask for an affiliate club too. Um, so I've asked for all of those. I'm gonna press continue and we should get three messages coming up saying yes, the board are instantly going to do the club training facilities. That's going to cost three and a half million pounds and they'll start doing that in the next month. You'll love to see it. Youth facilities they have rejected. So let's discuss the board or discuss with the board about this. Can you please do youth facilities? And they've just said yes straight away. I've not even had to make my case. I've just said, what's this about you rejecting the youth facility upgrade? And they've said, oh, sorry, we didn't mean to do that. So they're going to do that and that's going to cost five million pounds and that's going to be starting very very soon too so that's good they have rejected the affiliate club though uh, let's discuss this with the board so the options i've got here are to improve the scout network or to secure first options on players from a club with a good youth recruitment ideally i'm going to go scouting network because i want to get a club in like china or japan or america to try and boost our reputation elsewhere so I'm going to save a scouting network one first and foremost. If I go for this youth one, 
I imagine they'll find a club in Spain. This one seems a bit more international. So let's say that, and they're not prepared to grant the request. Okay, now this is where I have to start convincing them. So I'm gonna click all these random things here and hope they say yes. And they have said yes. Oh, well, that was very quick, wasn't it? They've said yes. And they've also asked me if I'd like to pick a specific club. That is something I'd be interested in getting involved with. So yes, I'd love that. So the board have come back to me and they're letting me choose an affiliate club. Now, I've pretty much just done 10 minutes of recording going through like the entire list, which is absolutely ridiculously long. There are thousands of teams here. Um, I spent 10 minutes talking through so many of them. Realized that was just a load of rubbish. So instead, I'm gonna do it very quickly. Basically, the list that have come back, there's no Chinese, Japanese, basically it's all European countries. There's nothing that we can actually go to and say we're going to build a big reputation in China or Japan or America. Basically, this is as good as it gets right now. And I think the best thing to do is go for a club in Russia because that has the biggest population and we've got access to a very, very good league there if we go for a Russian club. There's plenty of teams we could go for, but for me... I think Russia represents the best value. There's some very good players there. And potentially we could get some quite decent marketing in Russia as well. So we're going to go for Kim Ki in Russia, I think. But I am also quite tempted by Mladost in uh, Serbia, which would be quite an interesting team to do. But I think because we want marketing more than anything else, this team, Kim Ki, might be the best one to go for. So I've chosen Kim Ki, confirmed that club, and we should have that affiliate signed up literally in any second now i imagine so there we go the link has been set up that's fantastic we can send our players on loan there for free which is great i suppose we also have a first option on their players as well and hopefully marketing wise this will have a big impact for the club as well fingers crossed so a pretty good start to today's episode already uh, let's get actually into the transfers though of course this is a transfer special so the scouts have been very busy trying to find me some players and this currently is a list of players who have got contracts expiring in the next month or so. And you'll see right in here, Dusan Lalovic, a player we've had a couple of times in on loan from Napoli, his contract expiring. And I think it might be worthwhile offering it to him because he has been a decent player for us. He's not really let us down. He's got a great personality and perfectionist. So in a few years time, he'll be a great tutor to some young players. And okay, yes, a 6.7, a 6.61 is not ideal but I think he would be relatively cheap to bring in. So, and it's also free. We can spend the money elsewhere too. So I think the first thing we do is offer a contract to Dusan Lalovic. He wants to be a regular starter, moving up to an important player. Let's get rid of that important play a bit. And he wants to use the club as a stepping stone. A minimum fee release clause must be included. Well, that's fine because minimum fee release clauses have to be in Spanish contracts. So let's suggest the promise, uh, finalize the promise, negotiate the contract. He wants 12 grand a week. Now that is a little bit of an issue because that takes up a big chunk of what we've got remaining after other players leave the club. My main priority is getting this wage budget down. So I might leave in a vast majority of these bonuses. I'm gonna get rid of his wage rise one. In fact, both wage rises. Sell on percentage fee, I might just leave it like that because I don't imagine we'll sell him on for a lot of money in the future. So I'm not too fussed. He's not gonna be a 10 million pound player, for example. So. I'm not too fussed about that. Let's leave everything as it is, but let's try and drag this wage down to like seven and a half thousand pounds. Suggest he's gone straight up to 14K. You hate to see it. Okay, uh, 10 grand might end up being a bit better. He wants 12 and a half. Let's work on the assumption that 10 grand is something he's, he's gone 11. 10.5 has agreed to it. It's better than 12. Okay, so Dusan Lalovic should be coming back to the club. I do think he's a good player. He's probably better than all the sentiments we've already got at the club anyway. Uh, and I love his perfectionist personality, great determination, teamwork, and work rate. So I like him. He's a good player and a very good tutor. If I actually filter this properly for other center mids, uh, I don't think there's too many around that would be interested in coming to us. Maybe we could go for an older face in the squad. Aldo Mize, currently playing for a team in Paraguay. Has he got European nationality? He doesn't. Now, this is going to be the biggest issue, I think, for us this season, non-EU players. Currently, we are allowed three non-EU players, but I'm pretty sure that that is changing to two players for next season. I'm almost sure of it. 
Currently, those three non-EU players are David Perez, who is back this season on loan. He accepted the bid, so he's coming back on loan this season. The good news about him is that he is literally 27 days away from getting uh, Gibraltar nationality. So that should get rid of any non-EU player bias for him. Admir Veroni is another player with non-EU nationality. He plays for uh, Kosovo, who aren't in the EU in this game yet. Uh, so if we look at the information... He is uh, 399 days away from getting Gibraltar citizenship. So he'll take up a non-EU player spot this season unless we send him out on loan. Nikita Razakin, also obviously one of those players with non-EU nationality being from Belarus. He has got 374 days to go. So if he stays this season, he will also take up that non-EU player spot. And Paolo Ramis is the fourth player who is taking up a non-EU player spot. Uh, coming from Uruguay and he doesn't have anywhere near the days required for Gibraltar citizenship. So, that's three players, four players, including Nikita Razakin, and we can only have two of them next season. Now, I guess David Perez doesn't count, but for me, Razakin and Veroni are going to be around next season. So, we might have to actually sell Paolo Ramis. Now, he didn't play massively last season, 19 games, not very, very well, and his potential's dipping. I think we've got to try and sell him. But essentially, we've only got to sign EU players this summer. As far as I'm aware, it's only EU players, which is very sad. Now, very shortly, we will look at the relegated teams and see what players are available from those. We'll also look at players on the transfer list in general and players who aren't on the transfer list. But I would rather wait for the actual window to open before we do that, as Dusan Lalovic is set to sign for us. I think that's a good deal. We'll accept it. We'll get Dusan Lalovic into the club. But before the transfer window properly opens, we can take advantage of the loan market. And considering we don't have much in the way of transfer budget and not much in the way of wage budget as well, I think we do need to try and take advantage of the loan market as a Chinese club are looking to sign Kenneth Gisk. I'll be honest, there's a part of me that is open to listening to this. One, because he's on a lot of money. And two, because for me, Sione is better. Sione's played better than him. Obviously, after we signed him permanently as well, Kenneth Gisk got so many injuries, which is also a big issue. Things we signed him for £7 million. So we'd have to be spending a lot more money or, or getting in more than 7.5. Basically, if they offered me like 15 million pounds, Gisk might be on his way. That's very interesting. Uh, I wasn't expecting a transfer to come in for a player like Gisk, but if that's the case, maybe we should do it. Anyway, before the whole Gisk thing started, I was talking about getting players in on loan. So I'm going to have a look for players listed for loan already. There's a few of them. A few of them do look good. The issue is uh, they are both currently playing for Chelsea and Liverpool and are English, uh, which means they will be non-EU players. Unless, of course, they are playing in the Eredivisie because this, the thing is, obviously, it was a whole accident moving some clubs to the Eredivisie. That was not meant to happen. But actually, do these guys have Dutch as a second nationality? No, he doesn't. Okay, well, and of course they won't because they're not actually playing. They're playing in the Eredivisie, but they're not based in the Netherlands, are they? So they won't have Dutch nationality. That's a bit annoying. So whilst these guys look absolutely incredible, like really, really good players, I'd love to get them both in. I imagine on reports they would count towards... Oh, there we go, you can see it there, the non-EU player bias. Thanks a lot, Brexit, you pricks. So that leaves us with not an awful lot in terms of players listed for loan who can actually play for us. Let's sort. It's already sorted by value as well. I assume when the transfer window opens, more players will become available. It's not sorted by value. Hang on, sort this by value again. There we go. That's much better. I mean, let's also we should probably whilst we're here add condition nationality. Uh, EU national because then we can filter out everyone who can't play for us. Probably a good idea to get scouting some of these guys too. So let's get on to that. So three lone players are set to go back. I tell you, I wouldn't mind having Luca Galina back again at right back. I wouldn't mind having him back. But I think we could find better maybe in terms of crossing and dribbling. But maybe we don't need him to be good at crossing and dribbling. Maybe we need to just improve a little bit defensively. Because he's good in every other area. He's good. It's a difficult one. You know what? We're paying seven grand a week on his wages, which is a lot, but it could be a lot more for someone else. I think we maybe try getting back on loan. 
Although they are looking to give him a chance in the first team, so maybe we're not going to get him at all. I'll put the bid in, see what they say, but I think we might get rejected here. Although Inter have come back straight away and accepted the bid. So Galina, hopefully he comes to us. Is Brandon a wonder kid as well? So that's exciting. There's a chance we could maybe try, you know, the more he plays for us, right, the more he's going to love playing for Lincoln. And at some point, we could put an actual permanent bid in for him, for a wonder kid. I, I think this is actually the first wonder kid we've properly had. That does say wonder kid on his name. Now, potentially JD Meekin could have been a wonder kid. Potentially Anthony Lopez could, Anthony Walter, not Anthony Lopez. Anthony Ward could have been a wonder kid as well. But we never saw that bit of information on their names. So I think this is the first wonder kid we've properly got, I think. Like, wonder kid defined in the game is a player under the age of 21 with a current ability of at least 100 and a potential ability of at least 150. That's how the game defines a wonder kid. So potentially a player could be 18 years old, 99 current ability and 180 potential, but the game wouldn't call them a wonder kid because they've not met that 100 current ability threshold. But he's here, Luca Galina back. Um, I'm happy with that. I'm happy with that. That seemed like a, him and Veroni on the right-hand side are a good pairing. So I guess technically the third signing of this transfer window behind David Perez and Galina coming back for another season. But the first permanent transfer, Dusan Lalovic, is here permanently now, which is fantastic. Uh, Dekeni, welcome to the club, please. Lalovic I genuinely is the best centre mid we've got now, I think. It does say Galina is better, but Galina is a right back and he's not going to play there. So Dusan Lalovic is the best sense mid that we've got. And immediately on the first day of the transfer window opening, two Chinese clubs are bidding for Kenneth Gisk. Now, at the moment, these bids are nowhere near big enough and we can't negotiate them. Apparently, we cannot negotiate these bids. So I'm going to reject both of them. Let's reject them both. Right, looking on the first day of the transfer window being open, uh, loads more players are now available for loan. So I'm gonna try and scout some of these guys out too. Still no one else looking particularly good, annoyingly. So hopefully some of these other players on loan will look decent. Looking on the transfer list, again, there's not, there's not a whole lot of quality there, but if we sort it by value, suddenly we've not scouted out some of these top players. So let's get some scouting reports done on the top valued players at least. But if we get rid of a transfer list, it's time to have a look and see like who we've scouted out that is available. And there are some decent talents here. Now the filter is currently set to centre mids because centre mid is what we are currently looking for, obviously. The man at the top is from Real Zaragoza who just got relegated from La Liga. Uh, we haven't looked at that yet, have we? We need to scout these teams out. By the way, they're, they're managed by Solskjaer, so how the mighty have fallen. Whilst I remember, let's actually get the team reports done for Real Zaragoza, uh, and then we'll also look for the other two relegated teams, get some team reports on Getafe. We spit at them, we don't like Getafe, but we'll get a team report on them anyway, uh, because they, they did beat us, so they might have some good players, to be fair. And then also Granada too. But moving back to this Diego Santos guy from Zaragoza, apparently is a centre-back, but can play CDM and centre-mid, so looks versatile. I'd be happy to play him anywhere. Now, he's wanted by lots of clubs, lots of clubs, including me right now. The issue we have, though, is valued at 5 million. We've only got 7.5 to spend, and I assume they're not going to let him go for cheap, are they? Discuss with the interest with the agent. Uh, Zaragoza will want between 4.5 and, and 6 million to make a deal possible. We'll make an offer, but I'm going to make it... 3 million and hopefully they just say yes. Also, why is Nikita Razakin not back with us yet? Ah, uh, it's because Belarus, plan, uh, they plan a different calendar, don't they? When does, when does he finish his contracts? His contract finishes there. Oh, in January. Oh, so I thought we'd get Razakin back. We're not going to. We can recall him. This, this might help out though. He will go and score goals for Barté. And actually, it will save a European EU spot for us, actually, won't it? So actually, maybe that's not a bad idea, you know. In bad news, though, uh, the bid for Diego Santos has been rejected. Let's push it up to 4 million, then. I don't want to go much more than that. But more clubs are interested in Kenneth Gisk. If they'd only pay, like, Huesca offering... Huesca say 12 and a half is good for them. Ooh. And the thing is, I don't want to sell them to a La Liga club, but I'll be honest... For the money that we've got right now, he'd save a big chunk on wages and be able to bring in some other players, wouldn't we? I'm going to reject it, right? But I'm going to keep pushing it up. 
I said 15 million early, didn't I? 15 million. Let's keep pushing it up. Real Zaragoza want five and a half million pounds for Diego Santos. And I'll be honest, I'd be happy to pay that five and a half million if we got 15 million pounds in for Kenneth Gisk, I think. He's young, got good current ability. He's got some good... Well, actually, his heading's terrible, isn't it? But we were planning to play more centre mid, weren't we? That's what we've... Okay, well, I've just noticed his heading's only eight. That might be a bit of a, a downer for me. Let's ignore it for now. Club's coming back in for Gisk again. No one wants to pay 15 million for him. It's a tough one. It's a tough one with Gisk. I want to see how high they will go. How about 13.75? In-game, Serbia have joined the European Union. So all Serbian players now count towards... EU registration, so they won't be a non-EU player. So actually, Serbia would be like. Let, let's scout the national team out. Let's scout their national team because that. I mean, I'm, I realise right now I may be getting a bit panicky by scouting the national team of Serbia, but it's not someone we've hugely looked at before. And, and this guy right here, winger on the right, he plays for AC Milan, so we're not going to sign him, but. We could find some really good talent in this team. Speaking of talent in the team, the Real Zaragoza team is looking nice, I must say. There's some players listed for transfer, a goalkeeper that we're not too fussed about, but this this striker, Diego, for example, he could be a replacement for Gisk if we get rid of Gisk, you know. 14 goals last season, he's as good as Gisk then, we know that pretty much. Uh, how much is he available for? 18 million. Sevilla and Hertablin are paying that money as well. Okay, well, we can't do that one then. Getafe, there's a few players listed by request as well. Uh, a centre-back here, slash CDM. So, oh, this guy could be all right, you know. Valentin, I think... Has he always played there? He hasn't. I do recognise the name, because it is quite unique. I feel like I did chase him at some point. I feel like I did want him. And he'd bolster our CDM and defence. How much are they selling him for? 4.3. Right, this to me seems like a no-brainer. I know I've chased him before in the past. 4.3, make the bid. And then Granada, let's have a look at the senior squad there. Oh, we've not actually got the report back for Granada yet, but there are some players here who look good, who are transfer listed. So we'll wait for that to come back in a couple of days' time to see what they say. Uh, but the bid for Valentin has been accepted. However, they want a lot of money, or he wants a lot of money. 22k. I do think he'd be worth it. I do think he would be worth it. He wants to be a defensive midfielder as a deep line playmaker. Let's get rid of that because you can basically get rid of most of these promises, if I'm honest with you. Uh, these two can stay. We'll also make him an important player, which he's happy with as opposed to a star player. Finalise the promise, negotiate the contract. Now, this is where it's going to get tricky. He wants 22k. The most we can offer right now is 19. I want to bring this down to like 15k. All right, and I know he's going to be cross. We'll see what he says. Let's keep the sell-on percentage fee, because I doubt we'll sell on for much in the future. Everything the same, apart from the wage and stuff. We, we'll get there with him. We'll get there. How about 16? It's this signing-on fee is going to be a big issue. Let's up the agent fee as, as to maximum to try and get his agent to tell him, yeah, this is a good place to come. Suggest terms. He's, we're slowly getting him there. Slowly getting him there. 16... Right, he's in our budget now. 16 and a half. He's happy with 16 and a half. It might be a little much, but I'm going to finalise the deal. I think he's going to be worth it. Also got a fairly professional personality, so we'll end up being a good tutor down the line. You'll love to see it. More offers made for... <laughs> More offers made for Kenneth Gisk. Let's reject these. They're obviously not the 13 and a half million that we wanted. Transfer offer to clubs... 12.5, that seems to be the number that some clubs were interested in, weren't they? And no, oh, Huesca, again, coming back in with 12.5. I'd rather not sell him there, that's the issue. So again, I'm going to reject all of these. And I don't think we're going to end up selling Kenneth Gisk, are we? Offer to clubs. I'll bring it down to 11. Let me bring it down to 11. I don't think I'm helping by constantly offering him out. I think if I'd left it, other clubs might just end up starting to bid more money as we kept rejecting bids. 11 million by Huesca. See, we're not getting anything big other than Huesca. So I'm going to stop offering him out. 
I'm going to leave it for now. Kenneth Gist, we don't know what's going to happen to you, but you might be here, you might not be here. Also, how have Huescu got so much money? They're offering 12.5 million for Gisk, and they've put a 4.6 million bid in for Diego Santos, even though they were accepting 4.3. I mean, who is in charge of Huesca's finances does not know what they're doing. The thing is though, lots of bids are coming in for Valentin, aren't they? Uh, lots of bids and lots of contracts are going to be offered to him. So at this stage, maybe we do look to up this a little bit to 17 and a half thousand pound a week. Now I still, I don't think we're going to get him. I think he's going to choose somewhere else because somewhere else will offer him more money than we can afford. However, this guy from Croatia has just turned up in our scout reports. Um, a CDM, I mean, it says five star. We don't know too much about him yet. So let's get some more scout reports on him. But this could be promising, you know. Quite cheap in terms of cost and... Co I tell you what, if this guy turns out to be decent, we're getting him in. Oh, but now this news article's come through saying that Huesca wants to sign Gisk for 20 million. Uh <laughs> I'll be honest, 20 million I'd say yes to Huesca for. Let's do it again. 20 mil offered to clubs. If Huesca bid 20 million, they can have him. They can honestly have him. Ah, oh, but unfortunately no clubs are offering 20 million pounds for Gisk, which is uh, very upsetting. Although this Chinese club are also thinking a deal of 20 million. I don't know if it's 20 million is like what they're actually thinking or what the game thinks they should be offering. I don't know. 20 million is his minimum free release clause. I'm happy to let him go for 20 million. Yes, he's a great striker. He's done some great stuff for us, but that is a quick bit of profit for us. And we need the money, really. So kind of right now, we're in a little bit of a waiting game, waiting for, hopefully, a 20 million pound bid for Gist to come in, but also waiting for the Valentine issue to solve itself out, if he's going to sign for us or not, and also for scout reports to come through. So at the moment, it's a bit of a space bar fest at the moment. Oh, you hate to see it. Well, this has ruined any chance of Kenneth Gisk leaving now. He's broken his leg for five to seven months. No one's buying him. No one is buying him. We'll send you to a special... He's not being bought, is he? Oh, you hate to see it. Oh, we should have accepted that 12 and a half, shouldn't we? We should have accepted that 12 and a half, and then he'd broken his leg somewhere else. We've now got to pay him so much money for six months to do nothing. Can we keep this quiet, please? Can we please keep this quiet? You know, don't tell any of the clubs he's broken his leg. He likes to walk around or be pushed around in a wheelchair because, you know, he likes to protect his legs, something like that. January, everything in our power we've got to do to sell Gist. Yes, he's good, but he's not going to be the same player. He is not going to be the same player after that injury. No clubs want him because of his injury status. Oh. Well, that could be this transfer window down the drain, now that we're not going to get money for him. That might be it, you know. Well, back looking on to players on the loan list then, uh, in the centre mid. There's a guy at Chelsea, who could be alright, you know. He's also listed uh, for £2 million. A cheap one, as a deep light. You know what? His balanced personality is not the best personality in the world. It's pretty average. But, like... I feel like he could be a decent buy, you know, looking at his attributes, they do look, I mean, passing is insane. Vision is, right, let's put a bit of two million in. Put the bit of two million pounds in. I'm also looking at transfer listed players, aren't I? I meant to look at loan listed players. Listed for loan, please. That's what I want to look at, please. Listed for loan instead. But that was a good, you know, person to see. Uh, there is a guy at Atletico who is listed for loan. He's on 48 grand a week. Now, I'm interested to see what they want in terms of payment on that. Uh, transfer, make an offer, loan. They want 43 grand. We can offer zero. I mean, let's put the bid in, but I don't think they're going to say yes to that. The next best guy is a chap from Borussia Dortmund. I imagine they're going to want a lot of money as well for his contract. They want 100%. Uh, we can only pay 10%. Oh, this is... I'll be honest, boys. This could be a very short transfer special at this stage. Please. Oh, we can't, we can't ask. We can't ask for increased transfer or wage budget. Oh, no. There's just not a lot we can do other than sell players. But I don't really think that any of our players are in demand. Apart from Gisk, who's now bloody injured, which is so frustrating. Uh, the Chelsea guy has accepted us though in centre mid. 
I don't think we're going to have the room in the wage budget though to actually sign him. I don't think. We do. 17 grand he wants. Okay, let's bring this down to 12. Okay. Um, let, uh, unused substitute fee. Let's get rid of that as well. Let's suggest that. 16. 13.25. 14. He's had, okay, 14 grand is okay. Veroni is now up for six weeks. It's not quite six months, but six weeks with a fractured upper arm. I'll be honest, this is not looking good for us. Atletico come back and say they want loads of money. Ugh, we can't afford that money for your player. So that's very frustrating. And the exact same with the guy. For, oh my gosh. Okay. We can't even get players in on loan right now. That is a huge concern for me right now. And Valentin has gone to Real Valladolid instead. Understandably, they're paying him more money than we can pay him. And Valladolid are also in Europe this season uh, because they did brilliantly last season. Although it didn't say anything there yet, but they are in Europe. I'm convinced they're in Europe this coming season. Yeah, they are. They're in the Europa League, so I can understand why he's chosen them over us. Rayo Vallecano want Pascal for two million. Um, I tell you what, I don't want to let him go, actually. He's quite a decent player for us. Um, but we could maybe get a better CDM in. Maybe. I'm going to reject this right now. They'll come back at three... He's got a minimum fee release clause of three million. They'll come back for three million at some point, I'm sure. In some good news, though, uh, Scott Murphy from Chelsea for two million pounds is set to sign for us as a centre mid. Uh, I hope he's as good as what I was making him out to be. We didn't get a full scat report on him, but he did look quite good. So I'm hoping that it is a, a good player. He, he looks... Three and a half stars is decent, but for me... I was seeing first touch 16, passing 17, vision work rate of 16, determination, of, okay, 11 determination, not quite so good, but decisions of 14. He looks like a very good player to me. So the overall goal today was to improve our midfield. We've signed Murphy, we've signed Lalovic. They are both better than any of the midfielders we had before. So we have improved that midfield. Still waiting on some more scout reports from the guy from Rajika though. Uh, still, Also this guy, he's a centre back and a winger. I love it. Can we scout him out more as well, please? Looking at the scout priorities, um, I think I need to cancel some of these, to be fair, because a lot of these players I'm not too fussed about because we probably can't afford them and they are not EU players as well. So let's cancel the ones on that. It's so sad. These guys do look really good, but we've got to cancel them because literally none of them are EU players. Apart from you, you can... Step He's an inverted wingback, so why would I be interested in an inverted wingback? That seems so silly to me. Unless, is he good? Not not massively, so let's cancel that report as well. Cancel these assignments. Focus on Serbia now, please. Focus on this guy from Slovenia. And we should be getting some more reports on this guy soon. I mean, I'll be honest, I thought the scout report might do more than this. The scout report has literally done nothing on him. Which makes me think I'm going to blindly bid for him. How much, how much can we get him for? Ask agent about availability. 2.7 to 4 million. Okay, make an offer. Let's start it off at 1.5. Suggest they say 5.75. Let's remove the percentage of next sale. We're going to bring this down, lads, to 2.5 million. Suggest they say 4.8. How about 3.2? 4.1? How about 3.5? They say yes, plus £700,000 after 50 league games. Can we bring this down to 3 million? and then put that up to a million after 50 games. Because if he plays 50 games, he'll probably be worth that. So let's suggest that they say yes. Okay, great. I can't be asked to sit here for like three more weeks to find out if he's any good or not. Um, maybe that's why we've not done quite so well in La Liga. Maybe that is why we didn't do quite so well last season. No, that can't be it. That can't be it. It's, it's the player's fault, not my lack of scouting. It's the player's fault. Either way, it seems better than the £7 million deal that we made for Roy Ariel last season, and he turned out brilliantly, didn't he? So this seems like a better deal still to me. Let's start negotiations. He wants to be regular start of an important player. Let's get rid of that important player bit. Regular start he's happy with, and he only wants nine grand a week, and we're going to bring this down to £6,500 a week as well. Get rid of that wage rise. Everything else can stay the same. He now wants ten grand. Come on, lad, calm down. 7.25 suggest... 7.5 suggest he agrees to that okay good the reports are done though on the serbian national team now um so we could try and find some decent ones here you know this keeper 1.3 million pounds four star current ability 
reports, no, transfer, ask agent about availability. Two million pounds if the keeper could cost. 17 handling, 17 kicking. Apparently as good as the Kenny, if not a little better right now. Oh, could we do with like an extra keeper, a better keeper? Let's bid 1.3 million, see what they say to that. Everyone else looks quite expensive. Uh, and if they are cheap, they're not particularly good at what we need. So maybe it's a better idea to scout out the entire under 21 squad instead. Serbia always have some good players always have some good players. Rayo Vallecano offering 2.7 million for Pascal. We're going to reject it, but he, he will go at some point. I think at some point uh, that three million pound release fee clause will be met. Speaking of letting players go, um, because we're getting more centre mids in now, if we sort it by current ability, we can probably actually Chensi, right, transfer, offer to clubs, transfer listing for an unspecified fee, get out of here. Probably the same with Paolo Ramis as well. Transfer offer to clubs. Get out of here, please. And bids have been made actually for Chensi. How much did we sign him for? The sad thing is we signed him for £370,000 and he's played a lot of games. But he's just not improved in that time. And he's now 22 and won't improve any further. So I'm going to accept both of these bids from Extruder this team accepts yep and then also accept the bid from kitty big bids are being made for paolo ramis when i say big bids i mean for much less than we bought him for we spent 1.5 million on him didn't we and he's not quite turned out how he wanted him to his potentials dropped and he's a non-eu player um so i'm happy to let him go to alaves or this other team which i presume is from um from from uruguay uh it's yeah it's from uruguay uh, the other two, though, aren't big enough, so we're going to reject the other two. Paolo Ramis wants a payoff, though. He wants 12 grand to leave the... Okay, you can have it. Accept the payoff. That is fine. Red Star have rejected the £1.3 million bid for their keeper. If we suggest terms, they want 4.6. Okay. And then after 50 league appearances, 250k. But they've also gotten that percentage of profit from Nexel, 40%. Let's cancel this quickly so we can actually get rid of that. I'll go forward a day to get rid of that. So there he is, transfer, make an offer. Let's add in percentage of profit from next sale and then remove and exclude. Let's offer two and a half and then after, after league appearance, after 50 league appearances, we'll give you another million pounds. How about that, lads? Suggest and they accept. That was very nice and easy. Also, the guy coming in from Slovenia um, that I've randomly put a bid in for, hoping he's going to be good. I've accepted it. <laughs> oh, dear me. Uh, please be good. Please be good. He looks good. He looks as good as the other two players that we've brought in. Um, and can play CDM. Better than Pascal can play CDM. So, actually... That was a good signing. That was a good signing. I'm happy with that. The stars also say three and a half, but I look at his attributes and I think he's better than that. I think he looks solid. Really good. Passing's great. Technique is great. Vision's great. Work rate is good. Decisions are good. Physicals across the board are pretty average. Well, actually, above average, I would. I think he looks class. So I'm very happy with that. That was a bit of a blind panic buy, but I'm happy with it. I think we've done well with that. And then the bid for the keeper... I think also looks good. Now, he wants to be a star player off the bat. Not sure we can agree to that. Let's make good, important player instead. Wants to improve defenders, and that's locked in. Okay, we might upset him a little bit. Let's suggest the promises, though. He's happy with that. Negotiate contracts to be around 10 grand a week. And let's get rid of the unused substitute fee. Although he's not, we, we don't put keepers on the bench, do we? So we can leave that in there. Let's just keep the wage down. Keep the wage down to 10.5. He agrees to that. Great. So he's going to come into the club by looks of things, which I think we should now get Marty Gonzalez out on loan somewhere. Transfer offer to clubs on loan as a first choice keeper somewhere. We really have wasted his potential. I think we've massively wasted Marty Gonzalez's potential and I feel really bad about it. Oh my God, hang on. Leal have made an offer for Anthony Ward of 1.5 million. Hold on. Hold on. We could get Anthony Ward back here, lads. He never actually cemented the Valencia first team keeper role. He's got 73 caps at the age of 26 for Gibraltar. Make an offer. It was what, 1, 1 million? 1 point something? 1 million. Make the offer. Would he want to come back to us, though? 
transfer ask agent about availability he would require Lincoln to improve their standings in the league to consider he's not interested in joining us then so maybe the guy from Serbia is better to chase maybe we should just focus on him instead that is sad actually that is quite sad um that fills me with a lot of sadness JD Meekin he, he, oh, he doesn't want to come back to us because he's now playing for Leipzig 25 million pounds they bought him for after a season at Bayer Leverkusen where he played 20 games and got nine goals he went over to Bayer later Bayer Leverkusen to RB Leipzig instead uh can we ask the agent about availability he doesn't want to join us I, I can kind of understand that uh here it is I told you it was going to happen Rayo Vallecano want three million pounds for Pascal or the offering three million pounds to Pascal I'll be honest I think I'm reluctantly happy to let him go He's been a good player for us for the past few years, but you can see on his average ratings, like he's not been a superstar for us. So I think selling him for three million pounds actually is probably sensible. In the meantime, uh, the new keeper is about to join us. Uh, we have to wait for more budget though. So let's delay it because we will get some more money coming in soon. I don't want to ask the board for it because they will say no and that will probably jeopardize the whole transfer. So let's ignore that. Paolo Ramis, on the other hand, is about to leave the club for £900,000. So that's going to give us the money, I think, anyway, to get in the keeper. So now that's happened, we can go back to this keeper and say contract away to transfer. Ask for confirmation. Can we have confirmation of this now, please? Let's go to this bit. Happy to set the sign for Lincoln. Accept the bid. You love to see it. In comes a new keeper. Now, this is quite mental, actually, because the Kenny's been our number one for years. And now we genuinely have someone who might actually be better than him. Definitely in terms of potential, the current ability is very, very similar. But I love his handling and his kicking. I really like that. The concentration's high too. Eccentricity is low. His first touch in kind of the area is a little low, but we can always train that into him. Let's compare him with Dekene. And I'll be honest... He's better than Dekene. In terms of shot stopping, distribution, his aerial ability. Eccentricity is higher. That's not quite so good because Dekene is very, very low. But because Dekene is older, he will have slight... Well, I was going to say slight better mentals. This guy's got better mentals. Communication is better. You can kind of understand that maybe being an older keeper. For me, Uros is better. And I think we've made a good investment there. I think what we'll end up doing is probably rotate them around so they can both play games and both show their strengths and weaknesses because they are very similar. But for me, Uros from Serbia, he's the future. So what does that leave us now? It leaves us with £300,000 and currently nearly £20,000 over the wage budget. Okay, not ideal. Ah, so Anthony Ward has gone. Um, he's gone from Valencia to Lille. Now, obviously, we put in a 50% of the future fee transfer clause in there. Um, we expect him to go for more than 1.5 million. I was expecting like 40 million down the line, so we get 20 million. Uh, no, not quite. Uh, we are going to get um, 600,000 pounds and then another 160,000 in, uh, in add-on fees. So that equates to half the transfer fee. So 750,000 pounds, yes, we'll take that money, but it would have been nice if it was actually, you know, a lot more than that. I think at one point we could have sold that clause for about three million. So I feel a little bit hard done by there. Pascal has rejected the contract from Rayo Vallecano. So he's going to stay at the club, which is fine. But I'd rather have the three million pounds. Um, I want. I, we need the money to buy players. So I have been recording for just over two hours now, OBS is telling me, and considering that no one else is kind of being sold and we've got no money and it doesn't look like anyone else is going to get sold at all, I think today's episode is going to finish up there. Yes, we've not signed many players. However, the signs we have made are very, very good. They're better than what we had last season. So we have improved the team. I'm a little bit scared about this, but let's have a look at the uh, season preview. Uh, 18th. I mean, it's it's. Pr I think that is the best we've ever had in terms of pre-season preview. And in the past, we've finished 13th and 12th. Our odds are like very similar to teams up to about Real Sociedad. It's maybe getting a bit, maybe Villarreal down. I mean, Espanyol upwards, that's a bit too far away. But I'd say we could be in the ballpark of the Villarreal 
down. So I think our target this season should be around ninth place or so. I'm happy with that. I think that's an improve. I think we've improved the team. And if I can just work on the formation a little bit. Now my plan was to go two strikers. That's blown out the water now because Kenneth Gisk has got a broken lower leg. So for me, that is... I, I don't think realistically we can go two strikers. So we might have to go for something very similar to last season, which I don't want to try and stay away from. I don't know yet. I'm not quite sure. But I think... We are looking solid, and I'm happy with the team that we've got. So thank you ever so much for watching today's episode. If you guys have enjoyed it, of course, if you have done, make sure you do drop a like on today's video. Subscribe to the channel if you're new around here, and I will see you next time. Have a good one. Goodbye.